Good morning, and welcome to the First Congregational Church of East Long Meadow. My name is Walter Polchepec, and I'm going to be filling in for our Reverend Carrie Bale today, as she has the day off. So I just wanted to give everyone a few words of welcome, and in our congressional, congregational greeting this morning, we're going to do something a little different. I want everyone to take their cell phones, turn them on, and I want you guys to text a greeting to someone because we can't be with each other today in person, but we're going to greet each other. Now you're going to have plenty of time because I can't text very well. So get your phone. So I'm going to say hi to people that I haven't seen in quite some time. So I'm going to see if I have Bruce Torrey's number because he's part of my church family because I always sit near the Torrey family when I'm in the front of the church, but I always move around. So I do have Bruce's number. So I'm gonna put a text to him and say, hi, Bruce. And send that. And if you guys think I'm kidding, keep going because I can't text very well. And I'm gonna send one to Tracy too, because she's gonna be in our prayers because Tracy is healing from surgery, but she's doing quite well. So I'm gonna see if I can find Tracy. Oh, I do have Tracy, Tracy Sterling. Hi, Tracy. So there, please, everyone send out a text message to people you haven't seen for a while or your kids or your friends or your coworkers or somebody, but let's give everyone a nice congregational greeting this morning, or people that we haven't seen for a while. And also, we're gonna be transitioning into the summer service program. So exactly what that means and how that's gonna be, we're still working on an exact plan, but it is gonna be a little bit different from what you're seeing now. So please work with us, call your deacons, call your friends, text your friends, and see, find out what's going on. So good morning to everyone. I'd like to transition into our call to worship now with Betty Ayers being our reader. Good morning. We are born empty vessels, ready to be filled with knowledge. Lord, fill us with your knowledge and wisdom. We have the skill to learn, to seek understanding. Let us fulfill the scriptures by learning and doing your ways. We have all seen the signs. Lord, allow us to understand the things around us, to hear the heralding trumpets, to see the fire, and to know you are guiding us in them. join me in our opening prayer. Lord, on this day, guide us as we miss your presence here on earth. We long for your Holy Spirit to enter us to show us the way. As we go through these uncertain times, as our lives are changed so rapidly, we worry about our future. 
Let your steadfast love come into us and guide us. Lord, open our ears to the sound of your word all around us as we don't always hear it. Open our feelings to the heat of the fire for we don't always feel for others. Allow us, Lord, to gaze at your wonder you have created and let us make it ours. Let us enjoy the coming summer season with peace and health for us and those around us while reminding us of your presence in our lives. So for this morning's children's message, you need to use a little imagination. So when we're born, we're babies, we come into this world, we're like this glass. We're really just a little thing and we don't have anything in it. But then our parents take us to church and they baptize us. So we're gonna let this red be the baptism. This is God coming into our lives. And it doesn't look like much right now. It's just a little tiny thing. But then as we go older, we gain knowledge. We learn how to eat, we learn how to talk, we learn all kinds of little things. And every time we do this, God is with us. And even though you can barely see it, God is coloring everything we do. But then what happens in life as we get older, something comes along and something crazy happens. And all of a sudden, this thing, this, this goes on and this fire seems to be attacking us and everything we know seems to change. Like when your bike has no more training wheels, like when you move to a new city or you, your parents get a new job, there's all this stressful, crazy stuff. And it seems like this fire is consuming everything in our lives and we don't know what's going on. Well, that's what happened when the people first had Pentecost because Jesus was gone off the earth. Their lives were turned upside down. This fire seemed to consume everything and they didn't know what to do. But then as the fire went out, they found that God was still with them. So even though they lost in the fire, God was still there. But then when we become adults, we get all this knowledge and you know where this is going. So now all of a sudden this new knowledge pours into us and it seems crazy and, and you, you can see that the red is washing out, but God is still with us. Even though we gain all this new knowledge, God is still there. So what I want you guys to remember is that even though it seems we lose in the fire and the crazy stuff happens, God never left us. And even though this big flood of adulthood and stuff comes into our lives, God is still with us. So I want you guys to remember that the Holy Spirit is always with you. Because even though we seem to lose in the fire, we gain in the flood. Our scripture reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you may be wondering, how come I'm here today instead of Reverend Carrie Bale? And why am I dressed in bright red? Well, today is Pentecost Sunday. Well, what's that got to do with things? Pentecost is a week of weeks. 49 days ago, it was Easter. It seems like the world has turned upside down and back since then. I was asked to do this service and sermon on Ascension Day. That's the day that Jesus ascended into heaven. While I jumped at the privilege and honor to be able to preach, the timing could not have been better. Today, our leader has the day off, and I found a way to let the Holy Spirit guide me. Just as our scripture reading said, and the Spirit gave them utterance. Pentecost is the day the Holy Spirit came into us. 
How could the church, which wasn't even in existence, function without Jesus? How could Christianity continue? What would we do without our leader on this earth? I think everybody knows that answer because we found the Holy Spirit, we believed, and he guided us. When I write a sermon and service, I usually have a month or more to prepare. I think of the Bible passage I want to use, and I think of how it relates to us today. So to put this all together in three days is a real challenge. I don't have any seminary school education in theology or public speaking. This was crunch time. I let the Holy Spirit come into me to get this done. I explain all this to you so you can relate on how Pentecost relates to me, my relationship with God, in what I call God moments. Now, God isn't going to send you a big sign like the thank you sign we have in front of our church from the Lions Club that says, you know, for all to see with the hearts that say thank you. It might not work like that. He speaks in ways we have to really look and feel. Years ago, I was in a really bad spot in my life. Some would call it a midlife crisis. I was having trouble sleeping, so I would go out and walk just to get tired out. As I was walking, not far from this church, right on Elm Street, I had an unforgettable God moment. I was walking and thinking and stressing about my future, and it was a warm day. I recall I was hot. I walked under a large shade tree, and just as I was thinking, I was thinking and praying for some kind of sign. And just then, a breeze of cool air descended on me from underneath the tree. It really was a sign from God that all would be okay. As I went further from the tree, the anxiety left me. I felt so much better. The Holy Spirit had literally just blown on me. Just as the scripture reading today said, a great wind blew across the land. Now, it might not have been a great wind, a gentle breeze, but you have to feel these messages that God sends you. This wasn't an isolated incident in my life in what I call God moments. Years ago, a friend of ours had invited us to stay with them on Martha's Vineyard. Karen and I were not yet married, but I had proposed to her early in the year, and it was our first trip without kids. So the place had a private little beach that was covered with little rocks, about two inches or so. I think you, it wasn't a very sandy beach. It was a very rocky beach. So at night, our friend Kenny would go out and place seashells he bought for his grandkids to find. So as Ken and I walked on the rocky beach with our water shoes on, Ken would place shells, and I just looked at the millions of rocks, the little rounded rocks. Karen came with us to see the sunset. She didn't have shoes, so it was hard to walk along the rock, so she stayed behind. Karen was silently praying for God to send a sign about marrying me if she was doing the right thing. This was unknown to me that she still had reservations. As I walked among the rocks, suddenly a rock called out to me. No, not really talking, but this little rock called out. It was surrounded by hundreds of other rocks, but I saw only this. It could have been all alone on the beach. It was laying out there and I saw it. So I picked it up and I went over to Karen and I showed it to her. And she was speechless. And I didn't understand because I thought this was the coolest thing. I'd never seen a little heart-shaped rock before. And then she related to me that she was thinking and praying about some kind of sign about marrying me, about would this be okay and how would her life work out? Well, I guess this little rock sealed the deal because we've been married 12 years next Sunday. What I want to relate to you is that when you're feeling alone or without direction, God is looking at you. When you're having fun and everything is great, God is with you. There might not be heralding trumpets and tongues of fire every time, but God does send us signs. It's our job to understand his direction and act on it. Amen. I'd like to, if everyone could join me today in the, the Lord's Prayer. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to do the anthem. I jumped ahead.
If everyone could join me at the end of the prayers of the Lord's Prayer, that would be really good. This morning, I'd like to talk about Cora Douglas. I'm not sure, my information's a little stale. I'm not sure how she was doing, but I know she's been in the hospital lately. And Cora was a really big inspiration to me here at First Congregational Church. As a matter of fact, she's the reason I actually read in church. If you've ever seen Cora read, she had a very powerful presence, and I will miss her. Uh, also prayers for Tracy Sterling, who continues to recover after surgery. Hopefully she'll be back ringing bells in no time in the sanctuary. I can't wait to see her again. I can't wait to see everybody again in the sanctuary, actually. Also prayers for all the crazy stuff that's happening in our world with the divisions that are going on in Minnesota for the protests, for the people that are risking their lives, for the people who are trying to protect us. Lord, give them guidance. Lord, give them solstice. Lord, give them peace. Allow us to gain civil rest, to not have these riots, to not have any more crazy loss of life. Lord, let peace come into us. We also pray for the people at, for, at Faith United Church on Sumner Avenue who've had to make a very difficult decision to sell their building they're not sure what they're going to do with their church, but they do have to sell the building. So, Lord, please give them strength and guidance. Let your Holy Spirit come into them that they can find their way after they make that transition, how difficult that must be. So if everyone would please join me in the Lord's Prayer and say it out loud with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to take a minute here to talk about our offerings. You know, Jerry Spafara has said that we're doing okay on cash, so don't worry. We still need your cash. Send it in. Put it in the mailbox. Put it on a stamp. I still need that. But one of the things I want to talk to you about, because everyone here who's listening to me probably has been on a committee or two or is probably serving on two committees right now. What I want you to offer today is your contacts. Just like I asked you to text someone, we use technology to text someone that we can't actually be here. 
use your contacts list and forward this email out to someone, forward this link out to someone and say, hey, look, this is what my church is doing. This is what we've done. Yes, we got closed down. Our sanctuary is shut down. We can't meet in person, but we found this way to let God come into us, to, to have the Holy Spirit empower us. All these people are making this happen. Send this out, show it to your friends, show it to your neighbors, show it to your coworkers. Send the Holy Spirit on this day of Pentecost, send it out to someone in your, just send them an email, forward the link and they'll see this sermon and maybe they will truly be inspired. But what's inspired you about First Congregational Church? So please send us your money, glad to have it but send us your contacts to forward this out to the world. Thank you. As I send us forth into this new week, Lord, let us receive the blessing of peace. Let us honor that blessing of peace that we have here in East Long Meadow. We haven't had protests. We haven't had riots. We haven't had strife like that. As we remain socially distant from each other, allow us to become closer to one another. As all this division and all this crazy stuff and this virus that is affecting our world, let that wash away from us. As the flood of knowledge comes over us, let us realize that we were all the same. Let us treat each other the same this week as we want to be treated. Let us receive this blessing. Let us be welcome and thankful for the blessing of peace and spread that peace throughout your land. Amen. Oh